Hello everyone, welcome to my Cardinal Sabir guide for static groups. Many players in Guild Wars 2 raid with the same static group of friends and guildmates every single week, which enables them to progress together on encounters. In this video I want to show some more advanced tips and tricks you can hopefully implement in your guild's clears to achieve a more efficient raid clear. I'm going to talk over some boss footage from this week's raid fold clear of my guild Cordacus Ministry. We are doing the boss in challenge mode for the extra loot, but you will find that most of these concepts will also apply in normal mode. So, right at the start of of the encounter, you'll notice something about our team composition. We are playing actually only with one solo healer, a druid, and he is in subgroup 1. This means that subgroup 1 has defensive boons like protection covered through the stone spirit. But the group 2, without a healer in our case, actually also has protection from our quickness herald. If you are trying to run solo heal on Sabir, I recommend that you make sure that both subgroups have access to the protection boon, because otherwise one subgroup will permanently be very low on health. So let's go. I think the opening is pretty standard, there's nothing really going on. But you will realize that at 90% we have the first break bar. And here comes the key thing. In order to maximize your break bar contribution, you should be running a weapon with a paralyzation sigil. Paralyzation sigil buffs the stun applied by the special action key by 30%. So from 500 break bar damage it goes to, I believe, 500 times 1.3, which is 650. So this is just much more efficient at breaking this break bar. Unfortunately in this run I actually do not have a paralyzation sigil on my staff, but it's something I should have when if I wanted to optimize this part. So as a takeaway, put a paralyzation sigil on your weapons if you can afford it, especially as a support. And then I'm going to use staff 5 and the action key. This is the same trick. I'm not going to talk much about herald specific th things, but this is the same trick that you can use in some fractals where you use the special action key to reposition during the staff 5 in order to get more hits in on Cardinal Sabir and hopefully melt the break bar. As you can see, I'm still spamming my facets in order to upkeep the quickness on everyone as long as we're stacked. As soon as we're spreading out, we'll have to... I, I can't apply quickness anymore and it might run out on people, so it's important to be aware of the positioning of everyone. Make sure that you don't get hit by one of the laser beams, this is easier in normal mode than in challenge mode because there are fewer laser beams. Just try to stand in a shard and try to be stacked up and it's going to be fine. Throws in some more CC, the bar is broken, and now comes the spread out. Try, if you're a ranged player, you can notice the positioning of our virtuosos here. They are fairly ranged and they are allowing the, the melee classes like a herald and a herald as myself and the untamed. They're allowing them to melee and the druid is also partly at range and the alak mechanist is also ranging. So in this situation we basically let, let the melees keep, stay in melee range, make sure that that they can keep attacking. Let's continue. Then we restack, and as you can see, as I restack, now I restart boon application again. And we burst to 80%. Most important thing about this first platform, there was a spawn of an ad up there because it's the challenge mode. Since we're leaving this platform, there's no real point in clearing this ad. This would be just a waste of damage. Like we spend 40 seconds on the platform, it's not going to kill us. Just, just ignore it. And these should be quickly burst down. 
And here comes the first thing that you'll only see in statics. This is a portal. To understand what this portal does, which we're going to take, we have to actually rewind to the to a bit back in the fight. Um, let's go 40 seconds back. At 90% health during the break bar, because then there's no it's not a damage loss. You see our virtuoso is running away from here. And he's actually jumping down to the platform below the boss, placing the portal exit. And then he quickly returns to us. And this is the portal that now he's, he's returned already and ruined a CC. And this is the portal we're going to take. And the reason we are not porting from platform to platform is that Sabir is coded in a way that it doesn't allow portals at an infinite range in the I, I believe in the Z axis, like that you can only go about 600 range upwards, not not an in not 5,000 range, for example. So we actually have to clear our way to this wisp here, and we can take the portal here onto the platform in front of Sabir again. And this saves us killing one wisp, and it saves us some walking. So this is a pretty easy thing you can do with with a portal, and it's quite a big time save. Just like 5 to 10 seconds. And the next thing you're going to notice it at, is at 75%. Sabir will start a deadly attack. You might have noticed that I haven't used my, my heal skill here. It's ready. To be used now and grant immunity against the shockwave. Now, why would you want to do that? M many classes here can grant themselves immunity, and if you can, you should do it. And why, why should you? Because, as you can see, you have a special action key right now, and as long as you have the action key, you actually do bonus damage to the boss. You also take more damage, but you also do more damage. So keeping the action key is very beneficial. If you went up the tornado, you would lose the special action key. That's why we we just press immunity against it and ignore this shockwave. And another obvious gain of doing that is that you don't like it wastes time to be up in the air. Up in the air you can't cast spells and down here I can just keep attacking. And the next thing that's good is that by keeping the action key here, I still have it. As you can see here, I have the action key ready. And for example, the druid who went up with a tornado because he has to, he doesn't have a blink and he doesn't have immunity, he lost the action key. And that's why I can instantly CC now, way faster than he can. And then we can just keep spamming the CC again. And now, during this break bar, another virtuoso has left the platform to place another portal. The next portal will be slightly further away because of the height restriction I talked about earlier. We will revisit that very soon. But uh, first we break, break the CC bar. Get ourselves to 65% when another shockwave is coming. And we make ourselves immune against it. And we face the boss. Now this is a bit unfortunate that we, we had another portal set up actually, but we were slightly too slow to open that one. So we missed one of the portals, but I'm just going to show you the easier portals that do not really involve a DPS check. So let's go for that. And as you can see, maybe if you notice it, um, the platforms are further away in height here. Like, like we're jumping much further up. And that's why we actually have to go one platform. We go to the same platform. But since this is so much below the next one, we can only take the portal up to here and not up to the next platform. This would have been out of range in terms of height, basically. So this is a shorter portal. is a bit less useful than the previous one, but still worth placing if you have it. Then we go... To the wisp. 
and we get on boss again. Unfortunately, one of our virtuosos has died now. Uh, he is going to die. And here you can see shockwave approaching. For this shockwave, I don't really have an out against it. Like my heal skill is on cooldown. I misused it before. So I just go up here. It's obviously, it's obviously not worth dying for a shockwave skip because it's hard to revive here. And it's also like a, a huge damage loss. So only skip the shockwave if you are confident that you have it. I didn't want to gamble with a blink here. I just went into the tornado this time. Now we revive our friend again. And 50% is approaching. And this is the moment where we should all save up the special action key. I'm not swapping to staff for this for this CC bar because we're going to break it with special action key. Anyway. Oh yeah. Let's wait for that. And once everyone has it, I recommend doing a small countdown. But when you do the countdown, I see a lot of groups and a lot of commanders do this countdown very slowly. Like they go 5, 4, 3, 2. There's no need for that. You can just do 3, 2, 1, go. Uh, because everyone should be should be in voice chat, obviously, in a, in a static group. Everyone should be able to react to a 3, 2, 1, go. And break the bar. As you can see, when spreading, I'm going to kill this, this Paralyzing Wisp. As a support, it's one of my duties to, to help keep the platform clean. I'm losing less damage than them for doing this. Kill the Wisp and then go back to the boss. Now 40% the Wisp spawns start on the outside. Now we have two strategies available to, to you. One strategy is that you are going to ignore all the Wisps. This makes the ending kind of difficult because there's some, some sort of a DPS check, especially if you only want one healer, it's very hard to out heal it. And you need projectile defense, etc. The other strategy you have available is to just kill the first Wisp that spawns. Just kill one of them and then ignore the rest of the fight. What I wouldn't do, unless your damage is really low, is I wouldn't go clear all of the Wisps because that effectively removes one player from the fight and that player could just be used to, to like finish the fight. And, and for, the, for that reason I feel like doing one Wisp or maybe two, but not, not all of them, is a good trade-off. I see many groups actually wipe due to the, one of the players going out to do Wisps and then they do Wisps for the entire time, they go very low on health and eventually they lose the, the duel against one of the Wisps because they, they get hit by one AoE or something. So in this run we decided to send our Blade Swan out to do exactly one Wisp um, because we have one dead player, we feel that improves the safety while not costing much damage. This is a tiny thing you can do when you have a portal up, because you did portal strategies before. You just take the portal into the corner and back. Yeah, there's not much to it anyway. And we get into a CC phase again. For this CC phase, it's quite risky to use Star 5. If I had a Paralyzation Sigil on my staff, I would still go to the staff, of course, um, just to boost my special action key. But since I don't, I just don't bother with it for now. What you have to try to do is try to avoid the White Tornadoes here, because the White Tornadoes will interrupt your special action key, or it will remove all the stacks you have. So getting knocked up into the air by the White Tornado is a sure way to slow down your crowd control contribution. Instead we all stay fairly stacked, so we can keep giving boons, keep giving healing, and just spam the action key while being away from White Tornadoes. You can also use the action key here to reposition your, yourself away from the White Tornado. For example, if I was worried about this tornado catching me, I could have action keyed over here, 
because it's quite far away from all of the white tornadoes at the moment. And then we spread out. And hopefully get another corner mechanic. Now I really wanted I really wanted to stay here and do another portal thing, but unfortunately the portal wasn't placed. So I had to walk. And the now the portal was placed, but it would not have opened in time. When taking this portal back, you have to be careful because the portal is kind of on a white tornado. This would knock you up and be a damage loss because it loses this special action key. I wait a tiny amount of time until the white tornado has actually passed it and then I take it back. Just a tiny thing. And finally, we kill the boss. Now, I'm at zero energy. And I don't have a blink and, or anything else. And the shockwave is coming. So obviously the right choice would be to go into the tornado. For some reason I missed the tornado. And I'm not the only one who misses it. But it's enough to kill.